What happened here? What's up everybody and welcome. Today we're venturing around to our 42 from the last episode. We got one more thing to do to it. I'm gonna show you. All right, so here's our 42. We got Devin here on the raft. He's gonna push this raft on the other side so I can put a decal on that side. We'll tie off to it. That way I can stand on the side of the boat. We're gonna see if we can sneak it underneath the dock here under our cord and get it to the other side. See if I can catch him over there. Oh, it looks like it's just gonna fit by, and you're gonna scrape some barnacles off. Clean the seawall, same time. Oh. It's literally an inch. Here, hang on. Is it pulling away? Yeah. That was keep the slack on this side. We need to put a little outboard on that thing or something. A little a trolling motor or something. Going in. Is there? Yeah, there's a rope on it. We can tie off. We could get this side because then we can. Could... Anyway, we got a fender on it so we ain't gonna touch the boat with it at all. Now let me go get some things. We'll get this decal on. All right, so we're sitting on a raft here. This is the decal that's broken. Got a new one right here, some cleaner. Got a razor blade in case we need it. Of course, coffee, it's important. So first we gotta just peel this old one off here. Looks like it's metal, but it's actually uh, just plastic. I think they do that because if it was metal, it would corrode. Oh, we're floating away. And I'll spray a little cleaner on it, let it soak into it. That'll help it release that adhesive. Before I put a razor blade on this, if it doesn't want to come off, I actually just take a bottle cap. Anything plastic, it's not abrasive, it's not going to hurt the gel coat. Let's see if we can just scrape this off first. That seems to work pretty good, so let me uh, work at this for a little while. We'll get this off. All right, so 10 minutes later, we got most of it off here. You still see the glue. I'm gonna spray this again. We'll get the rest of this cleaned off. All right, she's all cleaned off. You still see a little bit of the outline. I'll try to match that up when I put the new one on here. Get our new one out here. It's pretty. Hopefully we don't put it on upside down. I'm pretty sure it goes this way. Peel the back off of it here. I'll leave the front on so I don't touch anything starting to feel rain over here. Hopefully we don't get wet. Now here's the fun part. I'm gonna try to put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. All right, give it a quick wipe one more time before we put this decal on. The tail goes up. look pretty straight. Try to line it up with the uh, old glue marks. It looks pretty good for my raft here. All right, press it on a little bit so we can peel off the outside sticker there. Looks good. Brand new. All right, let me get off this raft here. They actually gotta use it next door because they're fixing the lift over there. So this one's done for now. Let's go see what we can get into next. All right, so here's our next boat here. It's a 33 Regal. We're just getting the canvas down so we can open the back up. We're actually going to uh, add a battery switch to the generator. The reason for it is to isolate it away from it so that we can, uh, well here, I'll explain it in a second when we get down there. All right, let's get our hatch opened up here. All right, so down in our hole here, this boat's a couple years old, so it has the uh, Optimus style steering, doesn't have the new Yamaha steering or any of that. Our generator right here. This is what we want to do here is, if you look, our power wire goes all the way and it's shared to our house side. And because this thing is shared with that house side, 
the customer is actually thinking, if you have a problem with the, the house side battery or something failing, this thing's not going to start. So what he wants to do is add just its own battery, isolate it by itself, so no matter what happens, this thing in an emergency situation should fire up and be able to help out the boat just in case you never know what could happen out there. It's kind of a good idea. So let's trace down our wire here first. Let's pull this off here. All right, so following this, it's gonna go up. And that's where our battery switches are. So we're gonna have to go up there, pull that panel, and get to the back of the battery switches so we can get that one wire off of there. The ground here is a little bit simpler. It just goes here, tucks underneath, and ends up at our ground block here. So this won't be a big deal. Let's go upstairs to the uh, battery switch first. All right, so I put the seat down a little bit because it was blocking us. But our battery switches are right here, the middle back of the boat here. So let's pull this panel out here so we can get behind it. All right, we got our screws out. Well, let's pull it forward. There we go. So if we look at the back here, everything's labeled. We should be coming off of one of these two spots here. This says 18 or 81. And it says house load. This one over here is our batteries for our engines. Should be port and starboard, yep. So let's go see what number is on the generator side so we can match it up here. All right, well I can see it from here. It is a 81 or 18, depending on which way you look at it, but that's the wire we need. So let's go disconnect it from the switch. All right, so looking at this, I got it off here. But if you can see down the hole, all those wires go through a bunch of sealer. So what I'm gonna have to do, oh, there you can see it better. They're completely sealed down through the hole so water doesn't drip anywhere if it gets in here. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just cut it as close to that as I can. And I'll cut it on the other side and we'll just leave it in there so it keeps that seal. Alright. So then we'll just pull it out of the zip ties. I'm not going to cut all those. We'll keep all the wires nice in here. Alright, so we got our power wire far enough. Because what I'm going to do, we'll follow our ground here. We'll unhook it from our terminal block. I'm just going to set a battery in here, we'll put a terminal on it, and what I want to see is if when this thing runs, it will charge its own battery. Because typically, when you have the generator running, you're charging to our battery charger here instead. So now, let me go get a battery, and we'll see if this thing is charging while it's running. Well, here's our battery. I put a temporary lug on this one to make sure I'm checking power right now. We have 12.5, which is good. So let's turn our generator on and see if we have a charging system in the generator to make sure this battery will stay up. All right, so it's not charging. It's actually using the power. As you can see, it's pulling power away from the battery slowly. All right, so we know our battery's not charging. I thought about this for a little while, and our best bet is to put a ACR in here, the automatic charge relay. What it'll do is charge our battery, but it won't backfeed. So I'm going to hook it to our engine battery over here. One of the port or starboard doesn't really matter. We'll follow the wires up. I'll put the ACR up here. I'll add our battery switch over here so the customer can just reach in here and turn it on and off. And then we'll run our wires up and back down to our battery, which I'm going to put right here, a tray right here. So the reason for this is if I add this to one of our charging batteries here, when the motor's running, it will also charge our, our generator battery or if you turn on the charger either short power or our generator here it will also charge the battery but it won't pull anything backwards this will isolate it so it'll only charge and it won't allow anything to be pulled from this battery so the generator will be isolated from everything else so unfortunately this cable that I have here the one that I pulled out is not going to be long enough so what I'm going to do is go get some wire we'll remake this cable here which I don't know what the gauge is, but uh, four gauge is way more than sufficient. Looks like they got bigger gauge here. So yeah, they're using two gauge, so I'll use four gauge. It's a little bit smaller, make it a little easier to work with. It ain't gonna change anything, being that the, this thing doesn't suck much power trying to start. And we got our wire here for our charge relay. We'll run this over from the battery. Eight gauge is more than sufficient. They use smaller wire on the charger than what I'm using there, so. Well, it looks like it was gonna rain earlier, but uh, it's not gonna rain. The sun's directly in the hole now. Feels like an oven in here. So what I'll do not to bore anybody, I'll do one step at a time here, and I'll show you as I do it. All right, so what I did first is just cut some cables to length so that I could run them up, put them where they're gonna go. That's gonna come down to our battery trays down here. I also have to use our ground block again because we're using the charging side of the motor 
and the charging side of the boat we need to also connect our ground to the rest of the boat stuff you know we'll connect our ground from our generator right to our battery and then I, I got a black cable right here that we're gonna run back to our panel from the battery too we've got our charge wires right here this is the charge wire so our ACR is gonna go there our battery switch will go here so first let me uh, get our grounds hooked up we'll get our battery in get the tray in get our wire starting to tie up here oh I almost forgot this also requires a ground in order for the relay to work in this. So Regal, of course, like every manufacturer, adds all the wires depending on what option you have. I got a dead ground right here that might have went to a light in here or something that the boat doesn't have. So we'll tie those back up after I rob the ground from this wire here. So all right, I hooked our ground back up to this spot. This is the wire that I made for it. Things got heat shrink, our battery trays in, here's our battery, and I got the generator ground hooked up. So. Ground is good, battery's in. Now let's feed power up so we can make it over to our battery switch. Part of the sun's shining right down on us here. So now we got our battery switch in, our wires, I'll just I'll have the zip ties on here. You can see how many ties that we have to go through here all the time when we're doing something. Our wire runs all the way down. Then we got one hooked to our battery, it goes back to the switch, and then comes right up to our starter here. Let's turn this on. Oh. There we go, we got power. If you hold the stop button on these generators, it activates the fuel pump to prime it. So now we got our wire for our ACR, another one hanging there. Let me get that together, then we can make sure this thing's gonna charge. Oh, and also, peel this off. You got us one that says generator on it. Look at that. All right, we have our ACR installed. Our wiring goes all the way over. To our battery here. Now let's turn it on and see if it's going to charge. Go downstairs to our panel here. Let's turn on generator. All right, so we got good voltage. Let's turn on our battery charger. All right, now let's go put a meter on that battery and see if uh, she's charging. Look at that, it's charging. Shut that down. We're gonna do a starter engine now. It's hooked to our port battery over there. So we'll start our engine and we'll do the same thing and see if it's charging. <laughs> stator too from the motor. Well, let's turn off our engine. Turn our key switch off. I'm gonna put all this stuff back, put it all away. But before I do all that, I'm gonna take a Spanish pause here because it's about 150 degrees in that hole and I've been in there for three hours now. So that being said, we are out of time for today. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Later. Ooh, it looks like they're getting ready for a mission. Ooh, there they go.